John, John said it. And I only repeat what he said. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And we all affirm that, don't we? From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Let us worship then and adore him on this Christmas morning.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lindenwood Christian Church. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. As we come to the last Sunday of Advent, we recall the many times we have been here before with still so much to do and so much love left unexpressed. God's love and In a world where even evergreens turn dry and brittle. Today, we prepare for the greatest expression of that love. God's love and Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Loving and most holy Father, we gather today on this fourth Sunday of Advent to worship you and prepare to celebrate your precious son's birth. We ask that you join us in this service this morning and open our hearts to hear the message presented today. Help us absorb the message and show the world your love through our daily lives. Amen. My name is Cindy Dando, and I'm a longtime member of Lindenwood, a third generation deacon, and a second generation elder. My grandfather was on the committee that, so, that recommended this site. I never knew my grandfather. He died before I was born, but I have roots that go deep to Lindenwood, and I love Lindenwood and all of you. We want to welcome first-time or new guests to worship, as well as those new to streaming online. For those who are physically here, please see the welcome desk after service for a small token of our appreciation for joining us today. In your bulletin, there's a tear-off slip. Please fill it out to register your attendance, as well as share any prayer requests you may have. There are also several announcements printed in your bulletin. I would like to bring your attention to a few of them to highlight the amazing ministries happening here at Lindenwood. We're excited to once again be able to offer two different worship experiences tomorrow for Christmas Eve. Our 5 p.m. worship will include a Christmas pageant along with Silent Night to Glow Sticks. Our 11 p.m. worship will be a time for lessons and carols. We are excited to share the gift of Christ with you and your loved ones this year. Now is the time to set not just resolutions for the new year, but a covenant to, to recommit to your faith life in 2019. There are several opportunities to join in as we usher in the new year. There will be a family ministry leadership gathering after worship on January 6th for all returning and potential people who would like to get engaged with our families. There will be a liturgist gathering on January 13th after worship for all folks interested in leading different parts of worship. 2019 is the year of transformation here at Lindenwood, and we can't do it without you. Now, with the love of Christ, we will share peace with one another. 
You can share a sign of peace, however feels best for you. A hug, a handshake, a wave, or the Holy Spirit handshake that Pastor Sandra taught us, where you place your hand on your heart, bring it close to your neighbor's hand, and return it to your heart. It's a beautiful, less germy way <laughs> to share a sign of peace during cold and flu season. So, pass the peace. Lauren McCormack and I've had the privilege for about six weeks now to work and walk with our middle school and high schoolers as their youth minister. Don't worry they're not running rampant today. Pastor Sandra is with them as they prepare for the Christmas play tomorrow. Before we join as a community in a unison prayer, I was focusing on that word community this morning and it reminded me that we all come together as a community. So I'm going to take a few seconds, if you will, in silence. I know that's sometimes awkward but focus on the life in the image of God that is in community with you this morning. Maybe someone next to you is young or young at heart and they have wiggles and giggles as Pastor Sandra calls it. Thank, the, thank God for the excitement that they bring to our community. Maybe winter has set deep into the chest and nasal cavities of someone sitting next to you. Offer them a cough drop and a tissue if appropriate, but thank God that they felt well enough to join you in community today. Maybe someone next to you has, gets to experience a season of rest during today's worship service. Thank God that they feel comfortable enough to rest in this community. Take a couple seconds to enjoy the life of this community and then we will pray as a community. Will you join me with the unison printed in the bulletin? Holy One, be the light in our darkness tonight. As we have lit the candle of hope, we pray for those who feel hopeless. As we have lit the candle of peace, we pray for all the victims of violence. As we have lit the candle of joy, we pray for those hearts are weighed down by sorrow. As we have lit the candle of love, we pray for those who do not feel loved, for those who struggle to love others. Holy One, be the light in our darkness, that we might reflect your light to the dark corners of the world. Let us continue in prayer together. Daddy, as another Advent is nearing the end and the birth and the epiphany of Christ are only days away, we come together to remember that you are God, you are Father, you are Mother, and we are your beloved blessed children. As we look back on this season of Advent and Advent's past, we sometimes focus on the lack of things that at the beginning we wished had happened in our families. 
We sometimes focus on the turmoil and the fighting in our city and in our nation. We focus on the sadness and the fear that's in our world. And we focus on the hate over who said what at the dinner table last year, and then why do we have to go see them? Help us to see our role and our place in these feelings and help us to overcome them. Help us instead to find the hope for a better tomorrow where everyone's needs are met. A peace of acceptance of our brothers and sisters in our streets and on Facebook. The joy of the new discoveries of your creation and the nations that you made coming together to provide resources for those nations that are without. And help us focus on the love expressed to whoever we decide is our true family. Most of all this time, we thank you for our sister spirit who you placed here to guide us. And we pray that we follow the urgings that you place on our heart that help us reflect your image more day by day. We pray that as those urgings arise, we act on them, that we reach out to those that we see who feel no love, who feel no hope, who have no peace, who can find no joy. And we ask that we be that for them. We thank you for our big brother, Jesus, who humbly allowed himself to be born of a woman, a woman who he helped create. We thank you that everywhere he went in this glorious world that you created, he left footsteps. Even places he did not physically travel to, there are footsteps that he left behind. And we thank you that our only job is to follow those footsteps. And as we enter this last week of Advent and going forward, I pray that those footsteps be illuminated, that they shine bright, that our steps are sure as we follow behind them. It's in his name I pray. Amen. Those who have voices to sing, sing. Those who have, who have those little throat problems, hum. <laughs> Let us be recital of the communion hymn number 144, Emmanuel, Emmanuel.
as this is a joyous season of Thanksgiving with Advent, the coming, the expectation. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for this great Thanksgiving supper. Join with me in the thanks great Thanksgiving printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Sweet Jesus, we take the bread and wine in remembrance of you. As your time on earth was coming to an end, this act of reverence you left us with, we thank you for. But now we celebrate your birth, the beautiful beginning of bringing God to be a part of our lives, a time of renewal of, of our faith this Christmas. Thank you for these things. Bless all of us at this time of Christmas, this holy time. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. And when supper, during supper, Jesus took bread. He broke it, gave his disciples, and said, This is my body given to you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And when supper was over, he took the cup. He poured it out for his disciples and given it to them and said, this is a new covenant of my blood. This as often as you do it, drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Having shared this sacred and holy meal and celebrating the good gifts from our Lord Jesus, let us now, let us now uh, be filled and give and fill generous offerings for our church.
let us say the Lord's, <laughs> let us say the Lord's prayer in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your gifts of peace, joy, hope, and love. We need not search too far to witness the countless ways that you provide for our needs. May grat gratitude dwell in us so that our hearts will overflow with generosity in ways, and please bring clarity of the ways that you want us to joyfully share your gifts. May our work, which is done in your precious son's name, bring good fruit and glorify you. Amen.
This morning's scripture is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. May God add to these portions of Holy Scripture. Amen. If we'll bow for just a moment for prayer. God, our creator, God, our sustainer, God, our keeper, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your gift that showed us love without limits. Now, God, bless the hearers of your word and the speaker of your word. Do what only you can do. We love you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. You have heard that long scripture that I know you've never heard before. As we near the close of Advent, you know, we're getting closer to the end of waiting for the gift. Our series was waiting for the gift. We've learned about hope, we've learned about peace, we've learned about joy, and today we come to the, one of those most important themes and one of the most overused words in human history, love. Love appears over 500 times in the Bible. It appears in over 1,500 song titles, and that doesn't include any type of Christian music. Love appears many times in our lives, even though we sometimes don't want it to appear. Sometimes we wish it would leave. Even though we were taught, you know, to only look for true love as if we'd mastered the pointing out of fake love, I don't know. But what is love? Proverbs says love is unfailing, and then Deuteronomy says love is steadfast, and Leviticus says love is forgiveness. Uh, the book of Psalms says love is faithful, and all of these descriptions help us to recognize love, but today's text takes away the limits. But before I dissect the verse, that long verse that you heard, before I dissect that, let me put it back into the chapter where we got it from. A lot of times we, we um, memorize memory verses when we were growing up in Sunday school and then we think that they stand alone somewhere. So I always like to put them back where they belong so that we can understand what was happening in the context. So in the third chapter of John, that's the chapter where Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. Anybody remember Nicodemus? Good, good. I hear some people back here, mm-hmm, good. <laughs> Even if you don't, just ride with mm-hmm. And I know some of you are thinking, you know, yeah, I remember him. Didn't know he was connected, you know, to John 3.16. But that's what I'm here for, to bring it all together. That's why you pay me the big bucks, so I can bring it all together. So Jesus is discussing being born again. And Nicodemus asks, how is that possible? How can a man re-enter into his mother's womb and be born again? So Jesus explains this rebirth like only Jesus can. He explains that the rebirth comes from above just as Jesus has come from above. And this happens the first through the 15th verses. And then we get to John 3.16. Now, most scholars believe that the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus stopped at verse 15, and then the author, John, began to pin his explanation of the rebirth. So, whether the verse was spoken by John or spoken by Jesus, it is an important summary of the gospel, teaching us that God's motivation toward people is love. In a nutshell, it is the ultimate summary of love without limits. So this is what I want to do today. I'm going to analyze the verse so that we're all clear on God's love without limits. Then I'm going to share how we are to love without limits. And then I'm going to sit down. Is that okay? All right. Just letting you know step by step what's about to happen. So as we dissect the verse, literally phrase by phrase, the first phrase says, For God so loved. As we look at the adverb, so, it means to such a great extent. So God loves the world to such a great extent. God loves you to such a great extent. Then we look at loved. 
which would be defined as a great affection for or, or loyalty towards or even takes pleasure in. It's translated from the word, the Greek word agapo, which is where we get our word agape. God has an affection for the world to such a great extent. God takes pleasure in the world to such a great extent. But let me be clear, the love of God is not the effect or the end result of our loveliness, but of the absolute truth that God is love. It is not because we are so lovable. It is simply because God is love. God is love. God is so loving that God loves us when we don't love God. God is so loving that God loves us in the middle of our wrong. God, while we were yet sinners, God loves us. While we are sinning, God loves us. Can we love those that are unlovable simply because we are so loving? Don't answer that because I'm going to come back to it. For God so loved the world, that's the next phrase, the world. And as we talk about love without limits, those two words, the world, become more important than they were when they, when they were taught to us in Sunday school. See, when we're taught to study scripture, we're taught of the three worlds of the scripture, the world behind the text, the world of the text, and the world in front of the text. So looking at the world behind the text means that we consider what the author meant when he wrote what he wrote, what historical situation or influence for his words or his work. So the historical context that John was writing in always referenced God's love for God's people. God's love for God's people. See, Jews were very familiar with the truth that God loved the children of Israel. Nicodemus would have believed wholeheartedly that God loved Israel, but the whole world? This is a new revelation. This, because John is saying here that God's love is not restricted to one people. God's love is not restricted to one race of people. There was not much room in the Jewish theology to allow God to love the whole world. Is there room in your theology to allow God to love the world? Or does your theology just love the people that look a certain way or act a certain way? Don't answer that. I'll come back to it. For God so loved the world that God gave. God's love provoked an action. God loved, therefore God gave. How do we respond as love and how do we respond to love? Love is giving. Love is an action word. Love is a verb. God took pleasure in the world to such a great extent that God gave. What would happen if we measured our love by our action, if we measured our love by our giving? When was the last time you actively loved someone? When was the last time you actively loved God? Don't answer that right now. I'll come back to it. For God so loved the world that God gave his one and only son, God had only one son, and because of God's love for humanity, God gave him to make eternal life available to the world. God gave him to make hope available, to make love available, to make joy available, to make peace available to the world. If the depth of love is, is measured by the value of its gift, then God's love could not be greater. For God's love gift was his most precious possession, his only eternally beloved son. He could not love more. God gave God's best. Are you giving your best as a response to God's love? You know, there's a song that says, if riches could have paid the debt, then God would have sold all the walls of Jasper and the streets as pure as gold. But God knew the cost of one lost soul was more than wealth could buy. So he took on the form of man and became the perfect sacrifice. For God so loved the world that God gave God's one and only son that whoever believes in him, believe in is to trust, 
to put faith in, to rely on. John uses this universal term in, in the King James Version, whosoever. Whosoever. It means to invite all, to invite other, to invite the world to partake in God's love. An indiscriminate love that embraces every man, a love that embraces every woman, a love that embraces every child, whosoever trusts, whosoever puts faith in him, whosoever relies on him. John's whosoever is all inclusive. God's offer of the gift is all inclusive. Is your love all inclusive? Don't answer that right now. I'll come back to it. For God so loved the world that God gave God's one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The purpose for giving his only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. To have eternal life is to know God to be in relationship with God and be able to experience all the blessings that flow from that, both in the present age and the age to come. To perish means to miss out on these blessings, to fail to experience them, both now and in the age to come. For God so loved the world that God gave God's one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God loved so God gave. God loved so God gave. God loved without limits. So how do we respond? How do we respond personally? How do we respond professionally? How do we respond prophetically? Personally within ourselves professionally with others and prophetically for our future. How do we love without limits? I'm so glad you asked because I have the answer. You ask amazing questions. I wonder if you're such a genius during the week because you're amazing on Sundays. How do we love without limits? First, lead with your heart. Lead with your heart. Say, for God so loved, lead with your heart. The more you lead with your heart, the less you are ruled by your logic. You don't lose logic, but you aren't ruled by logic. See, we don't always lead with our heart because our heart has been broken before. We've been let down before and it causes us to guard and protect ourselves. Don't stop loving because of what they did. Let me say it again. Don't stop loving because of what they did. Because you know, we are quick to cut people off. We are quick to cut people off. It's one strike and you're out. We don't even give three strikes anymore. One strike and you're out of here. You may need to learn to love differently, but don't stop loving others because of the way one person treated you. God has yet to stop loving you based on how you treated him. As we love without limits, we must lead with our heart. Can we love, this is a question that I skipped that I said I'd come back to, can we love those that are unlovable simply because we are so loving? Yes, we can if we lead with our heart. The next we, after leading with our heart, offer your help. Offer your help. Remember, God's love without limits is action. God loved and then God gave. We have to actively love and serve others in ministry. We must actively love in our community. I was so excited to see the numbers from Westies, to see the pictures from Lindenwood serving at Sharp Elementary and Lindenwood serving at Peabody Elementary. We need more people to show active love. We need more people to offer your help. We have to be doers and not just hearers. It's, you know, it's good to remember the sermon during the week, but it's better to live the sermon during the week. Another question I skipped, what would happen if we measured our love by our action? You would offer your help. As my sister would say, don't just talk about it, be about it. 
So we lead with our heart, we offer our help, and then value your gift. Value your gift. God gave God's only son. That, my friends, is a sacrifice. I have one son, and if you're in trouble, and I have to give my son, you're probably still in trouble. <laughs> that, my friends, is a sacrifice, and God made the sacrifice. I remember when I was in elementary school, and we would have those canned food drives. Anybody remember canned food drives? We would have those canned food drives, and I would go home, you know, because I want, you know, mom, I want to participate in the canned food drive, and, you know, it's for the less fortunate. I had no idea that we were also less fortunate, but I was, you know, it's for the less fortunate. Mom, I need to get something for them. I would go home and take all the things out of the cabinet that I didn't like. <laughs> I take the, you know, that's why you're laughing because you did it too. I would take the green beans, I would take the sweet peas, the jellied cranberries, I didn't even know, what, why are cranberries jelly? Take that down, give it away. The can of Jack Mackerel, I don't get it, give it away. But one time my mom stopped me and she asked, why would you give people something that you don't want? You should want the children to eat what you like. She was teaching me to value what I offered to others. We must learn to value our gifts. Even as we give offering in church, even as we fulfill the pledges as we come to the end of the year, it's a sacrifice, but it is an example of the value of your love for Lindenwood and the work that God does through Lindenwood. There's a quote that says, you should give God what's right and not what's left. The next time it's time for offering, remember that. Give God what's right and not just what's left. There was a question I skipped. It says, are you giving your best as a response to God's love? You are when you value your gift. Lead with your heart, offer your help, value your gift, and lastly, extend your reach. Extend your reach. Loving without limits is a stretch. Loving without limits stretches us. See, we like to be comfortable when we love. That's not how God loves. We want to be comfortable in church and we want those that come to like what we like and those are the ones that we'll love. We, but we need to extend our reach and expand our boundaries if we want to serve the least of these. If we want to love without limits. See, sometimes you may have to hear songs that you don't love just so that God can reach the person beside you. Sometimes you may have to go outside of your comfort zone so that God can love someone through you just to show them God is love. A question that I skipped. Is your love all-inclusive? It will be when we extend our reach. Are you willing to help God love the world or just the people that fit into the box of your theology? I wonder who you need to stretch and love this week. Lead with your heart, offer your help, value your gift, extend your reach. Lead with your heart, offer your help, value your gift, extend your reach. For God so loved the world that God gave God's one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How do we respond to God's love? We believe. And then how do we respond when we believe? We love. We love without limits. We celebrate this season because God loved and God gave. We wait for the gift of God's love. And when we wait well, we experience God's hope. When we wait well, we experience God's peace. We experience God's joy and we experience God's love. I challenge you personally, professionally, and prophetically to love 
without limits. To love indiscriminately, to love unconditionally, to love beyond color, to love beyond lifestyle, to love beyond tax bracket, to love beyond zip code, to love beyond handicap, to love beyond age, to love beyond fear, to love beyond pain, and to love without limits. This is the only way Lindenwood can live up to the tagline, where you belong. It starts and it ends with love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It starts and ends with love. said, God so loved that God gave. God gave. There was an action. This is a time in our worship experience where just as God offered his son, we also offer his son to you. This is an invitation to discipleship. If you have never decided that I want to be a part of God's family, this is the time where we would love for you to come forward. This could very well be your day. If you come forward and give me your hand and give God your heart as the choir sings. Please remain standing for the choral benediction.
For God so loved the world, God gave God's one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God, we thank you for the gift. Now help us to lead with our hearts, offer our help, value our gift, and extend our reach. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>